We're honestly all trying to get real cute and real hot so that when quarantine is over, when all of this is said and done, our skin looks flawless. I am going to help you guys understand how to build a skincare routine. Please, as a reminder, this is a community and I want to continue to foster that community in beauty, whether it's skincare or makeup. So please, if you do decide to comment throughout this video, please make sure you leave your skin type, oily combination, dry, acne prone, sensitive, rosacea, whatever, leave that down below and then share your comment because somebody may be able to benefit from what you have said. Um, so I want to just continue to foster that. So without further ado, let's get into this. I know you guys are asking me all of the time what I use. So that will be in this video along with my recommendations for building your own skincare routine. So the first step to your skincare routine is cleansing. There are so many options you can choose between um, foaming cleansers, cream cleansers. There's so many different things. If you guys want a full deep dive on cleanser, I did do a video on double cleansing. I always recommend if you are a makeup wearer or a sunscreen wearer, I recommend that you do double cleanse at the end of the day. Now for the morning, a lot of times, not gonna lie, I will rinse my skin with a little bit of lukewarm water, get it nice and clean. I don't feel like you have to use a cleanser every single morning. You can if you would like. The cleanser that I am going to recommend to you guys to start off your skincare routine is the Derma E cleanser. That is the one that I use. Um, I think when you're starting out with a skincare routine, you wanna find something that's for sensitive skin, whether you have sensitive skin or not. If you're oily and acne prone, I definitely wouldn't recommend a cream cleanser or a foaming cleanser for you. I know that if you have acne prone skin and oily skin, me, you're going to want to use a foam cleanser to strip your skin and get all that oil off, right? but what you're doing is stripping your skin, you're stripping your pores. So the best thing is, is to find a cleanser that is not going to strip your skin and totally throw your pH out of whack, which is what's going to make it feel tight and dry. You never really want that with your cleanser. Let's just protect our skin barriers and use a gentle cleanser, no matter the skin type. So the next step you wanna think about is exfoliating. You do not need um, St. Ives scrub. You do not need to use a sugar scrub. Please, please don't. Please don't use any kind of real serious, like beady kind of exfoliant on your skin. It causes micro tears. Micro tears are teeny, teeny, tiny little scratches and cuts along your skin. And as time goes on, for the, for the time being, it's gonna look fire. It's going to look bomb. But as you get older and older, those micro tears are going to cause so much damage to your skin. I mean, you're going to get wrinkles so fast. You are just ruining that barrier. So please, please, please do not use um, physical exfoliants. I would prefer if you use something like toner. Toner is definitely one of those products that is not necessary in your skincare routine. And if you are having issues with your skin, toner could be the first culprit. So I'm never gonna say you need to have a toner. And I know a lot of people wanna argue and be like, oh, toner's the best or toner's the worst. If you like toner, you like toner. You don't have to sit and listen to what everybody's trying to tell you you might notice that your skin loves um, toner. I really like moisturizing toners. So for my skin, I really love Dr. Jart's moisturizing toner. It's the one with the yellow lid. I will share that in this video as well, um, but, but it's super moisturizing. I just take it with my hands. I press it like a serum and press it into my skin. If you have more like acne prone skin and you're really trying to get rid of acne, I would recommend going with Ulla Henriksen's Transform. Um, I think it's Glow 2O, Glow 2O, yeah. I really, really love that toner. When I am feeling a little more acne prone, I will use it either as a spot treatment and I use a super t tiny little um, reusable cloth and I'll link a few uh, reusable cloths down below. I personally am not going to ever recommend that you guys use cotton balls on your skin or cotton pads. Um, I do feel like just going across your skin with those, I know so many people recommend them, but I don't see how they're any better than um, a makeup wipe as far as putting that texture on your skin. So I'll link some super, super, super soft barely there kind of cloths that you guys can reuse um, throughout the week. Going into the next step in your skincare routine, treat. So you wanna cleanse, exfoliate, treat. If you are putting masks in your routine, you're gonna to wanna to do that right after your cleanser. So if you are doing masks, 
they're totally supplemental. Don't consider a mask to be your end all be all for any skin concern. They're fun, they're cute. So in the third step, the treatment step, you're going to want to use um, any retinols, vitamin Cs, anything with peptides, ceramides, anything like that, um, niacinamide, um, what else? Anything that is active, this is where you're going to use it in your routine. If your dermatologist has told you to use a Retin-A or a Retinol, this is the time to do it. I kind of ebb and flow based on when I will use a Retinol or certain um, actives during the year because they can make your skin very, very sensitive to the sun. Now, if you are wanting to get into Retinols but you have sensitive skin, I would recommend starting with Biosense's Phyto Retinol Serum. Just please keep in mind, if you are starting a Retinol, do not use it every single day, no matter what you think don't use it every single day. Retinol is only supposed to be used every other day. I would also recommend saving um, vitamin C's for something like the morning. And then if you're gonna do retinols, do retinols at night when your skin is repairing. I like to use the Ola Henriksen Banana Bright Vitamin C Serum. Um, I started using this uh, about three days a week and now I'm up to around five, six. Vitamin C and other antioxidants for your skin are everything because what happens throughout the day is you're getting free radicals hitting your face all the time and okay this is like a weird analogy but say that your pore is like this large a free radical can be like literally the size of the end of this like little lip liner not true to size you know what i'm saying but what i'm saying is you're getting free radicals in your skin all day long and vitamin c and other antioxidants help protect your skin from getting those free radicals in your skin and from getting that damage and they're going to help brighten your skin so if you have any acne scarring um any kind of discoloration a lot of times it will help you um, i also really like the caffeine solution by the ordinary it's a really really great product so i would recommend that to you guys as well if you're looking for an active to kind of even the um, skin out when you're first getting into skincare i would not recommend that you go straight for a retinol um, or a vitamin C, I would recommend that you don't do actives at all. I think to build a basic skincare routine, what you should do is cleanse, exfoliate if you feel like your skin needs it. If you're oily and acne prone, yeah, find a retinol um, or a toner that you love and then go into hydration. So what I really like and what I have noticed a big difference in um, in my skin is the B Hydra Intensive Hydration Serum. I so badly did not want to like Drunk Elephant because it is so overhyped. It's like Glossier. It's so annoying. So I really didn't want to like it, but I love this stuff so, 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 so much. I like to just give my skin as much hydration as possible because so many issues in our skin come from lack of hydration even if you have oily skin as I said earlier your skin needs hydration if you are giving your skin hydration say if you have oily skin and you put this on what you're doing is you're tricking your skin into thinking it's got enough oils produced and it doesn't need to produce more oils and it doesn't need to over actively produce aside from this product you could always use a different serum you don't have to use this one but a good hydrating serum is going to do wonders for your skin because the molecule size is so much smaller compared to say an oil or um, even a moisturizer the molecule size for both of those products is going to be much larger so it won't penetrate as deeply that's why i always say if you're going to spend your money spend it on your serums and i just think I mean, like so many issues come from hydration. It's so important, whether you have oily or dry skin, to be hydrating your skin. Whether you're a woman or a man, hydrating serums, get into it. Okay, let's get into the next thing. I'm gonna have some people probably come for me for this one, but this is my take on it. I would put oils next. Now listen, some people are going to say, no, oils go, go after moisturizer because they can't penetrate. A lot of oils are formulated to be able to penetrate. Um, I really like Pye's Rosehip by Regenerate Oil. Um, oil is really great for keeping what you've already put on, kind of like a moisturizer, it locks in um, those products, but they can still do some work depending on the ones that you're using. Serums do a much better job at penetrating than oils do, so I don't have a lot to say about oils. If you wanna spend your money on a really awesome oil, 
go ahead. Just make sure you use it after your serums. Um, and if you do want to play around with using it after your moisturizer, try that. I am not against that. Um, there are some oils that definitely do not penetrate. So you might have a better chance of using them after your moisturizer. Just play around with them. Do a little bit of research on your um, oil before you put it in your routine. Um, and if you do want me to answer if it can penetrate or not, just like literally leave a comment down below and I'll help you guys figure out how to find out if it penetrates and if you should put it before or after your moisturizer but i as a blanket always do it before my moisturizer now the next thing is moisturizer <laughs> so what i would recommend to you guys is the belief aqua bomb that moisturizer is everything it is so good so simple so clean and it just does its job your skin does not need something from the rainforest um, that sits on jupiter a lot of times your skin just wants something basic and simple and that one is the best moisturizer that I would recommend to you guys. I also really like the CeraVe um, moisturizing lotion. It's not even their face lotion. It's just their moisturizing lotion, but it's a really, really simple, really, really great product. Um, so if you guys want to check those two out, I'll leave those below and I will leave others down below for you as well. The point of moisturizer is to seal and lock things in. Moisturizer can definitely still penetrate, so I think it is worth spending your money on a good moisturizer moisturizer um, but the two that I have recommended are bomb fire one kind of hot button topic I want to talk about is fragrance in your moisturizers or any other products um, I know some people are very anti fragrance but here's the thing that I have learned after talking to many dermatologists fragrance um, as a smart choice you can avoid it um, but here's the deal there are so many different kinds of fragrances that you most likely are not going to react poorly to every single fragrance that is out there. Um, I personally can't use Glow Recipe products because they're, the fragrance that they use doesn't work well on my skin. However, I can use Ulla Henriksen products with fragrance in them all day long. It's totally up to you guys whether you want to use fragrance in your routines or not. There are just certain kinds of fragrance that I can't handle probably the same for you. It's a very, very common thing to want to avoid, kind of like sulfates and parabens. Um, so yeah, I hope that that helped you guys. Um, aside from that, there is one last step that I consider the most important step, and that is SPF. Now I have searched high and low for the best SPF out there that does not um, make your skin super white and is extremely hard to blend in. <laughs> And the one that I love the most is the Elta MD UV Physical Broad Spectrum SPF. I actually got this at my dermatologist's office and it is everything. She has a couple other favorites that I'm going to link down below because they were also amazing. But look at this. Boom. And if you have a darker skin tone and you're having a really hard time, um, I would really recommend uh, this looks white because <laughs> my self tanner but it's seriously blends into your skin so so nicely if you have dark skin tone black girl sunscreen is selling now at target um, and that is super super great for my darker girls um, definitely check them out it's a really great price point but it just blends into your skin so nicely okay my skin looks so much hyd more hydrated than it does on this side <laughs> what the heck i know that that's a lot of information in a short amount of time so if you guys have any questions please 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 in the comments down below ask um, I am more than happy to help you guys just think cleanse um, exfoliate treat then you want to go into hydrating and then you want to go into sealing and SPF that's all you need you don't need a thousand steps if you want the most basic thing kind of what I do every single day my foolproof kind of everyday routine doesn't fail me at all I cleanse with the Derma E sensitive skin cleanser then I will treat vitamin C if I need it I do not use that every single day honestly a lot of times I'll just cleanse use my B Hydra Intensive Hydration Serum, and then I will put on my moisturizer, and then I will put on my SPF, and I'm done. I don't like to do a ton of steps. Your skin does not want to have a ton of things on it. It'll have a harder time absorbing what you're putting on your skin if you're just like loading and loading products on. So yeah, I hope that that helped you guys kind of figure out what you guys want to do with your skincare and gave you new ways to maybe play around or help you guys um, understand in which order you should be doing your skincare routine. Um, if you guys have any questions, don't forget to leave them down below. I understand 
I talk really fast, my thoughts trip over themselves. It's, it's, a, it's a hot mess in my brain, but I hope that I could give you guys enough information to create a really great skincare routine for yourself. Don't forget, you can find me on Instagram and Twitter and TikTok at Kaylin Chase, K-A-I-L-I-N-C-H-A-S-E. Um, I hope that you guys have the best week ever, and until next time, bye.